grade, uh, we're going to go ahead and do our uh, common ass assessment analysis meeting for math. And uh, before we get started, we want to make sure everybody has signed in mm -hmm. and everybody has um, come prepared with their items, um, your class analysis, the um, grade level analysis, um, an agenda. and a copy of the assessment, and then your own technology. All right, Ms. Uh, Lawson, you're gonna be our scribe for today. Ms. Steve, and then Ms. Rose, will keep our time. Okay, so um, since this is our first one, we don't have data to look at from before, so we will jump right in uh, with identifying um, the rating and standard with the lowest percentage. So let's look at our data and pull that out. So this is a Eight minutes for this one, Ms. Rose. When I'm looking, I see um, six point five B, six point four G. Um, those are pretty to be. And 6.5 appear to be the lowest. What do you guys have? 6.4 G, 6.4 G, 6.2 B. I do have 6.5 B as well, but um, yeah. I agree. What about you, Miss Alva? Uh, I agree. Uh, 6.4G was my, one of my lowest. Okay. Okay, that's our rating standard. Yes. Um, so we can agree to focus on that one. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. All right, so now that we've identified that, um, let's look at the lead forward um, document. Uh, Ms. Jefferson, um, you're closest to me. You can look at that. We want to find out how many times um, this standard appears on the STAR assessment. Mm -hmm. Can you get the document? Oh, okay. Yeah. We're looking at the 2018 star, it was tested twice. Okay. And in 2017, it was tested once. In 2016, it was tested again twice. Okay, so we can assume that these two questions yes. for this rating standard will be on star. And we feel like this is the foundational piece that they're going to need throughout the year. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. All right, so let's uh, focus then on 6.4D. Um, that's awesome. Okay. All right, so we have at least two times. So now we're going to unpack it. So let's look at the assessment items on your own common assessment. And let's find out how many questions align to this standard on that one, or which, which questions they actually are. And whenever you find it, just shout. Question three and nine. Three and nine. All right, everybody go to three and nine. And while you're looking, we want to find out um, what a student needs to know or be able to do in order to correctly answer each question. And then Ms. Uh, Lawson, you'll take notes on that. So let's, let's look at uh, three and nine. Mm -hmm. We'll start with number three, that's the first one. What does a student need to know or be able to do in order to answer this question? You need to know how to convert uh, fractions to decimals. And actually, two per percents as well. So knowing how to convert that percentage to a decimal first, mm -hmm. and then being able to write a fraction from that decimal. Yep. Yes. So it sounds like overall mixed numbers um, that they need to be able to convert uh, to improper fractions. Yes. Yeah. They also yeah they also need to know that mixed numbers are always equivalent to improper fractions. Okay, so if you can capture that, I know Ms. Lawson on the template. Anything else on number three? All right, let's go to number nine. Well, same question there for number nine. What does a student need to know or be able to do in order to correctly answer number nine? All right. Simplifying the fraction before doing it would be easier. Mm -hmm. okay. And for number nine, it only gives us 
numbers, and so they have to create their own fractions. They create their own fractions? Yes. And then simplifying them to get back to zero step. Okay. And also for number nine, it was a, a not question. So it gave us information, the question that, that uh, and what it was looking for, as for the opposite. Mm -hmm. So they would have needed to subtract as well. Okay, so the information is not explicitly written. No. They need no. to determine or uh, draw a conclusion at first. Okay. Yeah, because it gave you like, um, people, the percentage of people who don't have internet, but then it asks you for the percentage of people who do have internet. Okay. okay. All right. Um, so we're almost done with that. Any, anything else? We're actually going to be the same. Anything else to unpack that for those particular questions? Vocabulary. Okay, mm -hmm. that's key. Good. Let's put, make sure we put those things down. And then Ms. Jeff, I mean Ms. Um, Lawson, if you can just tell us quickly what you have before we move to the next section. Okay, so far I have simplified fractions first when they're big numbers. Create your own fractions from words and numbers in the word problem. Um, I'm going to put parts of whole in here, like the parts of whole. Mm -hmm. um, know when to subtract and know the keywords and vocabulary. Alright, very good. Alright, so focusing on those same two questions. Um, let's look at, and you have your uh, data in front of you, the percent of students in the sixth grade that actually answered number three correctly and answered number nine correctly. It was like number nine was, was pretty low. 28.6%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it says 28.6 for number nine. Okay, so, so they said it's significantly better for number three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so looking at those two questions, we just talked about what they need to know and be able to do to answer them. What might be a, um, what might account for the notable differences in their performance on the two questions? So, so what's the difference between the two questions? Number three, number three is very direct. Um, it asks you to solve for a fraction and a decimal. Where number nine, they ask for a percent, but the fraction is just not given. They have to be able to pull it out by reading the key information in the word problem. Okay, so again, just with that given and implied information. Yes. All right, so then quickly think about the, the, the plan and how those this standard was taught and consider what might have been left out. Was there a gap in the instruction, a gap in um, closing the, the loop for the students so they would be able to do this one correctly? And let's, let's identify that. <clears throat> Maybe zone in on the uh more on the keywords that identify fractions, mm -hmm. okay. such as out of. And, mm -hmm. and also making sure they um, understand what the question is given versus what the, um, the question is asking, the information given in the question versus what it's asking, because I saw a lot of trouble with that. Then the, when it says do have and who doesn't have internet access. Okay. So I don't think they honed in on those keywords as well. Okay, so back, back to vocabulary even and understanding when they see key terms, very good. Okay, anything else? <clears throat> Most importantly, being able to differentiate between part and whole. Mm -hmm. So we have a part here, we have a part here, and then here's our whole. So we need to make sure that we see, okay, I see this part, I see the whole, where is this part? They need to identify each one and then be able to put them together and see how they got the whole. Mm -hmm. That's what's gonna help really with those. So visuals also. Yeah, mm -hmm. consider. Drawing a picture. Yeah. Right. So when they get ready to make our plan, uh, let's, let's consider that, okay? So not that not that it wasn't done, but we need to focus, focus on seriously it. on how to do that. Because yeah. they're able to address the skills somehow, right. but this piece is what's missing. All right, so now let's look at um, 
each question and let's see what errors they made. Um, look at your item analysis. What um, answer was most frequently chosen that was incorrect? And Ms. Uh, Rose, you can start the timer. For number three? Yeah, let's start. We can start with number three. Number three? A. Yes, yeah. I have That's what they chose the most. So we'll put it on the Okay, so more for A. All right, so we'll capture that, um, Ms. Ms. Lawson. And then what about um, number nine? Um, I have C. 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 Yes. All right, so now let's look directly at the questions. Go back to three. And we said most of them chose A when that was not actually the correct response. Why do we think that they chose A? I believe they chose A for C because um, if you look at the answers in between A and C, they're similar, but uh, which means they converted the percent to a decimal correctly. And I'm assuming the answer asked for a fraction, so they saw a proper fraction and just picked it. Mm -hmm. Instead okay. of um, is that the same for everybody? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Instead of number C, as to where they get a mixed number, not excuse me, not a mixed number. An they improper. were given an improper yeah. fraction. They would have had to convert it to a, a decimal as well to see that it's equivalent as well. Okay. Yeah. All right. So then, conversely, um, and just reiterate because you did just mention it, but just so we can capture it on the paper. Why, what What would make the students that chose the correct answer? Was there something that helped them to do that uh, more? I believe, for it three? Was, for, I believe it was converting that improper fraction to a decimal. Mm -hmm. okay. So they can see that it was. So they equivalent. knew to do that. Whereas yes. they, the ones who didn't choose it need a little practice on that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. All right, so let's look at, uh, at number nine. And the same question here. Uh, so we said that most of them chose, uh, was it C? C? C. All right, so looking at choice C and looking at the question, uh, why did they likely arrive at C? What was the misconception or the mistake? Well, uh, just looking at it, they took 500 and they subtracted 125 from it. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then they got 375 and so they just assumed and they saw the numbers the same and they just picked C. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Instead of just put a percent on it. Just put a percent yeah, on it. Yeah, just put it and called it done. Yep. <laughs> okay, and then um, Ms. Rose, I want to hear from you on this one. What what is what the students who chose correctly, what did they do um, that that helped them choose correctly based on your data? Um, so it might be simplified the fraction made it smaller and then they divide it and subtract it from the unit to get the correct answer. Okay. Oh, so they subtract it after. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. smarter. Mm -hmm. okay. And I always give so them So they have another method yeah. for yeah. Yeah. to do it. Did anybody do something different? Yeah, mine who um, got it correct, they subtracted first. And so they got the 375 over 500 simplified that and then converted that to a percent. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it sounds, this is aligning with what we said when we broke it down that they need to be able to do is know to subtract mm -hmm. first mm -hmm. uh, and then be able to break it down. Okay, very good. Anything else on those before we move on? All right, so now we're going to actually name the actual misconception. So uh, we're gonna just put it into one chunk. We, we have the answers that they gave, we have the wrong answers that they gave, we have what they need to know in order to be able to do it. So now let's actually name the key error or underlying misunderstanding so we can put that, uh, Ms. Lawson can type that in. If we had to put that in one statement, what's the key thing that they did incorrectly on these, the number nine? Um, I say knowing when, it's a, when the problem is asking you to subtract. And when the problem did you one thing, which was the people with the internet, um, but when they asked you for the opposite, which is the people who do not have the internet, and just knowing that they want you to subtract. So it sounds like we're, we're still coming back to that, that subtraction. Mm -hmm. 
And then um, also, um, somebody might have mentioned this before. Did we mention numeracy? Um, just being able to. Oh, number numeracy. Number percent. Number just mm -hmm. have a, a general understanding mm -hmm. right. when you're arriving at your answer. Right. Um, what makes sense? Right. Even before figuring it out. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. So um, now let's look back at lead forward. So if one of you guys can pull up the the items on the actual assessment that are aligned with this uh, 6.4G. Mm -hmm. And so then the next thing we just want to know is if we do, if we fix this misconception that we've named, will students be able to do those questions, mm -hmm. address those correctly? Okay, so... You have one, right, from uh, 2018? Um, 2017. Okay. And it is question number 36. On this okay. card. And uh, can you just read what it's asking? It is um, asking, says the company spent 32% of its annual budget developing the machine. What fraction of the company's budget was spent developing the machine? So it gives you a percent and asks for a fraction. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit more than the average. Yeah. A little bit more, so it's kind of like it's number three. three. Yeah. All right, so is there another one that may be similar to nine? Because we know that they could do this one with more practice, we could get a higher percentage, correct? I actually looked at all of them on the star, and they're more like number three, more direct. They are they're more direct. direct. And we know the common assessment sometimes will elevate the yeah, it's so a little so bit more to address. We were thinking so. we were going to just rewrite one like number nine mm -hmm. using different number, different situations, so they could see it just in case, yeah. you know. Or um, there's another one from 2016, okay. number 42, and it says a a, a restaurant offered cooking <laughs> classes on, on 24 out of the 30 days in November. What decimal is equivalent to the fraction of those days in November that the class was offered at the restaurant? Uh, it's a good base for a question for us to rewrite and add into choices too. Okay. So I think we should add so they do a have to do a little figuring. Yeah, mm -hmm. add an opposite to it so they will get that not question. Yeah, like we'd be like, would they, would, right? We should say what percent of the classes was not on for the day was not Right. Yeah. Yes. So so that's that's a good one. That's a really and good. it also has the out of, so they'll see the vocabulary. Should I put that on one of these? Which one yes. Is so it's number 42 from 2016. I think that's a good one. And I mm -hmm. also yeah. um, would like to rewrite that question to take the numbers out and put the numbers in words. Oh yeah, um, because they look at the, look numbers, the numbers and they, and they don't even yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna yes. get these numbers and do something with them. I'm gonna multiply, <laughs> nope, okay, I'm gonna divide, nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well thank you, Ms. Jefferson. That leads us actually now to, to our plan. So we have at this identified. So do we want to model and uh, i.e. walk through the steps with the students or do we think we can guide them in a discussion and get them to be able to understand this and do it on their own? We're gonna guide them in a discussion. All right, all right. So Ms. Rose, if you can give us um, 10 minutes. Okay. And we're going to, I'm sorry, eight, give us eight. And if we need more, then we know we have 10 more. So let's try to stick to eight. So we're gonna actually write out what is this going to look like? So I'm gonna let you guys talk about that. And uh, Ms. Lawson, you can just capture that information. What is the reach each gonna look like? So I'm thinking we actually take one of their questions, uh, questions that they did okay. with their work, okay. put it on the document camera, um, and let them, you know, depict, you know, pick out what's correct. What did they? What did they use in their UPS check? Okay. You know, um, and actually write down notes and agree or disagree with, with the students' work, so they can kind of see what they did wrong. Um, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and so we're going to kind of like justify why it's right or wrong, just right. to kind of, so they can think like, wait a minute. Yeah. Okay. Are we showing a correct problem or an incorrect problem? That's my question. Mm -hmm. Incorrect. And we're going to show one with that 37.5 oh. or 37 and 5% okay. which most of them chose. Mm -hmm. The incorrect answer. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to really help them. So they can see where you just do not subtract. Right. Like, don't do that. And just put a percent on. Don't do that. <laughs> okay, so I have a question. How, how long, um, I 
and I'll tell you why I'm asking this question in a second. How long would you give them to work on that? The incorrect problem. So the incorrect problem, I'm thinking maybe give them five minutes, no, not five minutes, three minutes to analyze it themselves. Okay. And maybe we might want to print it out and let them see so they can write on it. Right just on make them just, uh, yeah. Because then you can, you can aggressively monitor and see mm -hmm. like what they're doing. Right. Mm -hmm. And then have them do a think fair share mm -hmm. so they can agree or disagree with each other's answers and with their thoughts. Mm -hmm. And then we can kind of maybe do a, a book around okay. with parents yes. having a response. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I'm glad that you reduced the time because my question was, if it, we know that they don't know how to address it, so we don't want to give them too much time to spend still doing the wrong thing. thing. Right. Right. So that's the thing to consider with that. So everybody knows their individual class where they actually mm -hmm. were on this assessment. Mm -hmm. So when you're working with them, consider that um, amount of time. So if, if they're starting and you see that, hey, they're, they're, they're going to the wrong, then you can reduce that time quickly as well. It doesn't have to be um, the entire three hours. Makes sense? Mm -hmm. All right, so let's get, let's script it then. So we're, we're coming in, we're getting ready to do it. What are we saying? Um, hello class. No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they can, they can get kudos on, uh, you know, the, the T, right, for for their performance on oh, yeah. three. And then we can also say, okay, but, you know, we still have some work to do. Obviously, we want to still elevate uh, the percentage correct for number three, but then we have to address this type of problem for number nine as well. So, okay. yeah. So, kudos first. They would enjoy that. Okay, so kudos first before we get into the real work. Mm -hmm. so. Congratulations, guys. You did wonderful. You got a 92%. That's cool. On number three. On number three. On number three. <laughs> so first we're going to introduce the specific T, T. T. in the yeah. right. tell them, okay. Yeah. So if you got, just like we're narrowing our focus, narrow the focus for them. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. On number three. And then we can say, well, number nine, we had a couple of challenges with. Okay. Same T. Same, same thing, different, mm -hmm. but different word problems. And then going to um, showing them the students work and saying, well, here's an example of, of one of you, you know, here's an example that I got from somebody in this class today. No, mm -hmm. no, I don't want to say that. A student. A student. A student. A student. A student. Okay. And then it will say, uh, We'll give you about two minutes to analyze the problem. Okay. You have to justify your answer. So if you agree with their work, you write why you agree. agree. If you disagree with it, then you explain why you disagree. Mm -hmm. And then you feel, you know, if you feel like you want to make changes to their UPS check, anything in their understand, plan, yeah, check, or solve, do that. And tell me why. So they're actually writing their why. Yeah. Yes. Why? Okay. All right, so we have that. Um, what's next? So, so after they analyze, and then we'll just go into, let's do a quick pair, um, think pair share okay. with your partners. We already did the thinking part, so now we're gonna pair and share. Mm -hmm. um, discuss what you wrote down when you analyze this problem, and then take one minute to share with your partners. Okay. That's good. And yeah, and then just like ask students if they agree or disagree and then have them explain why. And then uh, you could even take a class poll over like how many people agree with what their work and how many people disagree. So um, like, like, a quick, quick, like, quick. like a quick thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs up, thumbs, oh, yeah. up, thumbs down if you disagree. Yeah. Is it too much, Ms. Lawson? No, I'm, 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 I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. And I can always go in and review it and stuff. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, I have a question. So um, obviously we're focusing on questioning and student discourse. So we have uh, plenty of student discourse in there. Are there specific questions that we want to pull out to ask them so we're guiding their thinking and their responses? Mm. Um, what does 125 out of 500 really mean? Mm, okay. Yeah. yeah. 
So we talked about the creating with the fraction. Yeah, okay. yeah so we're going to expect them to say like create a fraction, right? And then we can ask, what does the fraction, um, when they do create the fraction, what is like 125 over 500? What does it represent? I mean, does it represent the people who do have internet? Or does it represent the people who do not have internet? Okay, yeah. And then they have to go back to their problem and mm -hmm. just answer that over here again. Maybe ask them what other things do we understand in ways that we can show it. Okay. So that's when we incorporate the drawing mm -hmm. of understanding a part, Plus a part gives you a whole. Right. Okay. Uh, I think so. After we ask them, like, what does one twenty-five out of five hundred represent? And then they say they go back and look. They say that represents the people who don't have internet. Then you could say, well, is that what the question asks? Or and they're gonna look and see, like, no, I was asking for the percent that does have. Mm -hmm. So because I think that's part of them, they need to understand, like. You're being given one thing, but they're asking another thing of you. So it's the opposite you have to subtract. Okay, I have a I have a question there. I think that was that was good actually. Where should that question go? What is the question asking you? Because right now we kind of have it in the middle. But isn't that what we want them thinking about from the beginning? What is the question asking you before they solve? I mean, we do want them to know what the question is asking them before they solve. Just because obviously you'll have your annotation, they'll go through and they'll look and say, okay, what information is here? But before they start getting a plan, don't we want them to say, what, what am I actually getting ready to do with this? Right. So I'm just thinking that that's a great question. I'm thinking we just need to make sure that it's a bit at the top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we want them to come to that themselves or do we want it to be a leading question? That's a good, okay. That's not a but that's what I was thinking when, when we have them work on their own for two minutes and then do a thing, pair, share, it's our hopes that some of them are going to say, well, they're asking for this, but they're giving back. So, so when we start asking, yeah. Yes. All right. So okay. they're going to kind of do, them, do it themselves. Then that's when we start the guided discourse. Like, okay, so let's talk about it. Now that we've heard opinions from people, let's talk about it together. And that's when we're kind of like clarifying that. But some of them are going to realize that. Okay. And so. Okay. That's appropriate. I think so. Just be prepared to, to use that guidance if yes. they're not. So kind of use it like a check for understanding question. For sure. Thing. One thing I was just thinking that I'm going to definitely put in place, have the kids, as we write misconceptions on our exemplars, in your understanding, when you see problems that are dealing with fractions, that's what they're presenting. Quickly write down your misconception. Like, do not just put a percent on a number. Okay. Mm -hmm. So have them write down their own misconception. Yes. Okay. That's, that's good. That can be really good. Okay, Ms. Rose says we have 11 minutes, so we still have to not only wrap this up, but talk about um, what we're going to reteach in the session. Which is always the hardest part to do. <laughs> so. What else do we want to add to our uh, reteach? Are there a specific, so we talked about the strategy of having them redo it on their own. Are there specific strategies that we want to remind them about uh, in our reteach? Um, they know the strategies, like they know in and out they know Dr. Pepper. I think we need to help them come up with like a, like a breaking it down type strategy. Like when you see a problem that is asking you for a percent, but they didn't give you a fraction, you know that you need to make your own fraction. And so it's like, okay, when you're making your own fraction, first you need to create your part to hold fraction. Then you need to like maybe write what that fraction represents. So now you can compare what it represents to now what the actual question is asking you. If they're not the same thing, you need to do what? So maybe we need to come up with a two or three step plan. Like every time, okay, every time I have to make my own fraction, let me ask myself these three questions. 
Mm-hmm. So that becomes like, like an, an, an anchor chart, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. I love that's really good. Oh, that's yeah. really good. I like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, Miss Lawson, it's my girl. Write that down. So we okay. <laughs> Are you satisfied once you go with this? Like, should there be just a one problem, or should there be a problem where they show you their process? Because we talked about just grading the process before. Mm-hmm. That would be How are we going to close it out? Could we then do the problem that um, I'm going to rewrite? Yeah, I'll talk about it. I yeah. think that I think it's a good idea. Okay, so, yeah. then, so maybe put the example problem on the front, and then put the other problem on the mm-hmm. back. So once they finish on the front, then we'll have a little bit over and work with their partners mm-hmm. on. Um, the new problem from the start that we're going to rewrite. Right. Well, that I'm going to rewrite. Mm-hmm. And we can uh, have them put, you know, I really want them to put their work on the whiteboard. Okay. And all of that. And so we can do that. Yeah, we can check everybody at the same time. Mm-hmm. At the same time, yeah, that works. For the new problem. Right. Yes. Yeah, I thought that's good. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, as we're closing that out then, um, back to our agenda here, um, our next big piece is what implications does this have for our instructional planning calendar? So when are we gonna expect to redo this lesson with the students? And then um, obviously we're assessing it the same day, so I think we can just choose when we're gonna do it. Maybe we could do a Monday since we're moving on to something new, like kind of like in the beginning yeah, of so the class period. Yeah, do that and then move on to integrals. Okay. Now, uh, is this, when you redo this question, will that just be um, a problem for that day or will you loop this back into the mastery period? Well, we could loop it back into the mastery period. So we can assess it again to see yes, how to make sure that they truly understand. Yeah. Okay, so let's put that as, as part of the plan. So Monday, which is the 20, 30, the first, the third first. No, because the first, first. October 1st. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so then um, the next time we actually meet um, for data, then we'll have data to look at because we won't give a master period this Friday. Um, we'll do it the following time so that we come back. We'll, we need to, we'll make sure this is one that we look at, even though we're going to look at everything. We'll make sure we look at 6.4b. Okay. <clears throat> okay. How many questions do we want to put on there for 6.4b? Two. 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 I like that. And you might even do the same where like the common assessment one where it's direct implication okay. and one where they have to figure it out. Okay. And you can still just Yeah. Yeah, I think I just just another problem. The one that we had originally talked about, what was it, number thirty six? Oh uh-huh. yeah. yeah, I can That's still do that. One. Okay, so then right now we make sure which year was that one? That was from two thousand and seventeen. Thirty six was two thousand seventeen. And 42 was 2016. Okay. So on that, uh, on that one, are we going to ask for the decimal like you did, or are we going to go ahead and ask for the percent? I'm going to switch it to percent. Okay. And then from the one 2000 and uh, from 32, it only asked for fractions. Would y'all like to do fraction and decimal for that one? For the number. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because on number three, it asks for two. Mm-hmm. Okay, number yeah. three on the test, it asks for two. No, that makes sure to make it improper. Yes, it makes it, yeah. Okay. Oh, so on the start, on the X for it one. It only asks for one. Okay. Four minutes. Four minutes, okay. All right, so then in that time, Ms. Um, Lawson, if you can just give us a quick wrap up, what are we going to do? All right. 
So we are going to show incorrect student work to the kids and have them analyze it. Um, we're going to give them on the front of it is going to be that example problem of student work. On the back is going to be one to do on their own. Um, we're going to give them about two to three minutes to analyze that. Um, I mean, in fact, we're going to give kudos first to number three. Then we're going to give them a few minutes to analyze that. Um, make corrections if they feel like everything's okay. They need to justify why. They're going to do a quick think, pair, share. One minute to share with their partner about what they put. Um, we're going to ask. Um, who, uh, we're going to ask the student if they agree or disagree. Then we're going to ask an opposing student. Then we're going to take a poll. Um, we're going to um, then kind of go start going over it ourselves, asking those leading questions. What does 125 out of 500 mean? What does a fraction represent? Um, what is the actual question asking for? Are they the same? That's when we're going to introduce that new three-step plan. Every time you see a question that asks for a percent but doesn't give you anything to work with, you need to make a fraction, um, a partial fraction. They need to write what it represents and compare it to what it's asking for. If they're different, they need to subtract. Um, then we are going to um, also start teaching them to write their own misconceptions down in the beginning of the UPS check process and they understand before they even get started so they can not do that. Uh, <laughs> um, after the do now on Monday, the 30th, or the 31st? The first. The first. The first. The first. The first. The first. <laughs> Neither of us. We're going to give them that front and back sheet. After they do the couple minutes uh, with the whole class going over that, they're going to do the exact same problem, which is going to be question 42 rewritten from 2016 star. Um, then after they review that, we're going to grade that, look at it, see how they're doing. We're going to loop back around on Friday, put two of those questions on the mastery quiz. Um, that's going to be question 36 in the 2017 star, and I think question 32. 42. 42. 42. Oh, 42. And um, yeah, they're gonna get it. Okay, good job. All right, so before we close that, I just want to say um, that as a proud administrator, you guys, that our sixth grade students, um, out of the 4,094 students from the district that are in the system, uh, overall we were at 48%, which we know is um, as an average. Um, where we might be at this time of year, but we were at 48%, the district was at 37.9, okay? And for every single TEAK or SC address, we were above, well above the district. And in the one that we are, yes, 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 selfie high five. <laughs> and then in the one that we're actually addressing, which although we were low, um, overall with the two questions combined, our percentage was 44.8, the district was 32.7. So I think we're, we're no, no, no. a lot better. We're yeah, better. yeah, yeah, because yeah, we were very sad. <laughs> we were, yeah. we were until we compared last year to so this year. year that's yeah. 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 This year we're focusing more on meets and up. Yep. Last year we was just trying to get the approaching, so it's like <laughs> I forgot where I came from. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way of saying it. Yeah.